understand that if you're not going to pay attention to this, you will not understand it. Okay. I'll pay attention. And then when you start asking for help because you're not paying attention, I will not help you. Because if you're not going to pay attention, you're wasting my time. Well, you already wasted yours, so. Kaden? All right. Uh, I'm going to go over this real quick because it's something that you guys should have went over last year, no matter who your teacher was, okay? If we look at this, we have uh, rate of change. Okay, yeah, so if you had me, some of you that had me were not paying attention, like various people are now, okay? Rate of change, all right? Rate of change goes by many, many different names. Okay, well, maybe it's gone. Oh, what the heck? I love technology. What are you doing? <laughs> it is what we call, it starts with S. Slope. No, it's... Slope. It's slope. Okay. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Rate of change is the slope. All right. Slope will help you find equations, which we will do later. All right. Uh, something else it's called is M. Median. Sure. Median. And math. Miserable. Okay. It's called math. Some yeah. people know slope to be rise. Rise over action. Over run. Okay. Double R. Other people know this to be the vertical change. Vertical change. Uh, vertical going upwards. <laughs> Wait, M means rise over run. Over moving. Yes, all these things mean the same thing. Okay. Horizontal change. Well, you run horizontal and vertically. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Vertical is up and down. Horizontal is side to side. Okay. We'll go over what these kind of mean here in a second. Uh, M is Greek for slope. But I can't pronounce it. So... Uh, another thing it's known as is change. It is actually a lot of names, which is why I have to go over them, because when you guys are like, what is slope? I'll say rate of change. What's rate of change? Okay, I can go on, all right? Okay. Change in Y over change equals your median in X. All right. Finally, and this is the last one that we'll go over. Okay, uh, you'll see it as an equation. It'll it'll look like this: y two minus y one over x two minus x one. The thing you have to do on these examples is figure out if if it's linear, okay, uh, is this relationship linear? How many of you do not know what linear means? Okay, okay, that's fine, that's fine, all right. All it means is that the rate of change is constant. Oh, is that the one where it starts to zero and goes to zero? No, that's proportional, okay. If we look at this example, notice... Uh, we have to take this change here on the right, which is negative 30, and we'll write it out. Negative 30 over the change in x, which is on the left, which is 3. Okay, does this equal negative, 10. Yes, negative 30 over 3? Yes. Yes, it does, sir. Mr. Sides, if anyone Yes, it does. It does equal that, okay? So then we've got to look at the next one. Does this equal? No. So this is the change in x is 3. The change in y is negative 30. Okay. Now these ones are easy because they're all the same exact fractions. But like we talked does anyone know what we call this? No, this is what we call a fraction, okay? 
Since it is a fraction, you'll have everything as a fraction. No. All right? Since they are fractions, what you need to know is if the changes create a fraction that is equal. So let's look at any fraction, like 2 thirds. What would be an equal fraction to 2 thirds? Caden. Christian. Six ninths. Um, six ninths works. Six ninths. Me another one. Sione. Um, ten fifteenths would be reduced to five. That is good as well. <laughs> Seth, one more. Four six. Four six. Okay, very good. See now, this is what you'll need to see when you look at just the changes. If you find that all of the fractions are equal, it is linear. All right? So that's the first thing we need to face. We'll see fractions that are not all the same like these ones are. Okay? These are all, they all equal the same thing, but they are shown differently. Uh, if the rate of change is constant, this means that, uh, and notice, and you'll notice, Okay, if you look at A, uh, all right, I'm just going to tell you guys right now, if you ever see time, time is always the X values because it's independent. Time is time no matter what other values you're comparing it to, okay? Uh, so our temperature will be the Y values. Why is this important? Because now we can compare these when we find the change in Y and divide it by the change in X, okay? So the change in Y... Uh, between these two first values is it went down so I show it as negative 5 alright so I start my fraction and then I show that my change in Y is negative 5 alright then I look at my change in X between the same two corresponding values this one went up 5 so I show that it went up 5 Okay, so let's look at the next two values. So from 90 to 86, it went down by how much? Four. Four. So if I look over here to my fraction, this should be equal to, it went down four. How much did the X values go? Did it go up or down? Uh, up. up. How much did it go up? Five. Five, so it's a positive five. Are these two fractions equal? Yes. No, these are not equal, okay? Five-fifths definitely does not equal four-fifths, even if it's negative. So this one, we would say it's not linear. If it's not linear, it has no slope. All right? So bonus, we only have to find the constant rate of change if it is actually linear, but this one is not. So let's look at the next one, which is a graph. So, there we go. I'm going to start my fraction. And then I just need to choose. I'm going to choose the first two points. So I'm going to choose this one and this one. All right. This one right here. And this one right here. So I look at my change in Y. Notice I'm going to go. I always go from left to right. What that does for me is it makes my X value positive no matter what. Okay. Because I'll be going to the right. Yes, Christian. All right, <clears throat> so let's look. Uh, the change in Y, is it going to go up or down from this point, from that one on the left, to the middle point? Is it going up or down? Down. Very good. It is going down. So I know since it's going down, it's negative. Well, how far down did it go? It went from 80 to 60, which means it went down by 20. Okay. Some of you would look at this and say two because it went down two lines. Well, it did go down two lines, but each line represents ten. All right, Evan? Yeah, so in this class, we will never go from right to left. That way we don't have to worry which value is negative if there is one. Okay, so we've got negative 20, and then notice it's going to the right again. We've already indicated that the x is positive. But how far to the right did it go? It went from 8 to 16. 8 is this line. 16 is this one. So it went to the right 8. 
I'm going to go 8. All right? Uh, so notice I've only got this point left and this one in order to find out if this is linear, but the fractions do need to be the same, all right? So my change in y, again, it's going to go down from 60 to 40. So it went down 20, down 20. So we know that this denominator here must be 8 for them to be equal. And let's see, from 16 to 24, it did go to the right 8. Are these fractions equal? Yes. Yep. yes, so we know that this one is linear. The last thing we need to do is figure out what the constant rate of change is. Well, we do know that this is our constant rate of change, but it's not simplified. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the top. Can I divide the top and the bottom by the same number and get a whole number? Yeah, what is it? Four. So I'll divide the top by 4, which equals negative 5 over 8 divided by 4, which is 2. All right. And this is my final answer. If you put this as your answer on a test, the negative 20 over 8, uh, yes, you're going to lose points. So you must simplify. All right, now notice it did say if it's not linear that we should explain our reasoning. Uh, <coughs> My work is my reasoning here. This is fine. Uh, if you want to write two paragraphs about it, go ahead. But it's not required. Also, you may write this. See that some of you could get two paragraphs out of that. That's fine. All right, uh, this is just explaining what we just went over. Uh, they used B and A. Yeah, sure. All right, also there's another example. Notice they're looking at the change. Uh, this would be the, that is the y values there. This is the x values, okay? So you would have 9 over 5, all right? And uh, what this means is that, well, let's get some values in here, okay? Let's say for uh, 3 pies, you have, uh, I don't know, 2 feet, okay? Which means maybe if you had uh, mm, nine pies, maybe you have uh, six pizzas, right? Or maybe you've got uh, mm, 12 here and an eight. So over here you got a 21 and 14, all right? So what we need to do is look at this. This is for proportionality, okay? With proportionality, not only do the fractions have to be the same, but we can ignore the changes. Did that not make sense? Uh, yeah, in other words, I don't need to worry if it's proportional about doing this garbage. Can you guys not see that still? Uh, this. I don't have to worry about doing, oh, what's from 3 to 9, what is that? From 9 to 12, what is that? Or from 12 to 21. None of that matters with proportionality. Well, it does, but not necessarily. There's a faster way, okay? All I'm going to do is look at these values, like this one. I just want to see this as a fraction. Well, the book puts the y values in the bottom and the x values on top, so technically it would be 3 halves. Does anyone see what I'm doing here? This is just for proportionality. I'll explain what proportional is in just a second. Okay? So what would my next fraction be? Then I'm not figuring out changes. Yeah, 9 6, right? Are these two fractions equal? Yes, they are. Very good. So let's look at the next one, this one. Very good, it's 12 eighths. And my final fraction? 21 14 Are these all equal? They are all equal, okay? Since these are all equal, we say it's proportional. Done. Take. All right, let's, let's look at uh, proportional. Pro, poor, 
Nality. On Nality. There's really only two things you need for uh, a relationship to be proportional. All right? The first thing you need is for it to be linear. Okay. Uh, another way to look at this is that it will be a straight line. If it's on a graph, okay. But if you see this in a table, then the rate of change needs to be constant. So we call it constant rate. O change. All right. Does anyone remember what the second thing is that you need? So it has to be a line, straight line, that goes through. Origin. The origin is, well, some people call it the zero value. It's the zero for both x and y, all right? So if we look at the graph, like this one, okay? Some of you have seen this type of graph. This is my x-axis. This is my y-axis. And then down here, they'll show a little circle there. That is not a number. That's a letter. It's O. It stands for Opportunity. origin, okay? It's talking about this point right here is the origin, all right? This one right in the middle where the two axi intersect. All right, do these problems. C, one, two, and three. I think they're all on the same page. Next page. 174, right? All right, let's look at C. Uh, so on C, for example, I'm going to look at these. Again, mass is going to be my x and weight will be my y because that is the way the book will always do it, okay? So if I look at my first values, which is 20 and 9, so it actually becomes 9 over 20, right? Does this equal my next fraction, which is 18 over 40? Yes. Yes, right? All we did was multiply the numerator and denominator by 2. Good. The next one is 27. Is that equal to 27 over 60? Yes. Yeah, right? Does that equal 36 over 80? Yes. yes. Done. So this one we would say is proportional. Yeah, also since it's proportional, it's linear. Well, this one just wanted to know if it's proportional. So I would put proportional. Evan. In the amount of paint Y needed to paint a certain amount of chairs X is shown in this table. And, of course, they told you which is X and which is Y. Is the relationship between these two linear? So, again, we've got to compare these two. So we've got to do the change thing now, right? Because this one is asking if it's linear. Like Christian said, if it's asking for linearity, we do need to figure out the changes. Yes, Gaden. All right, so this is, my first change is plus 6, right? Mm -hmm. So my change in y is plus 6. Plus now my change in y is plus 5. So I've got plus 5 right here. This has to be equal to the next change, which is plus 6 over plus 5, which is the change in x. Are these two fractions the same? Yes. yes. Are they equal, I should say? Yes. Yes, they are equal, so this one is definitely linear. Linear. What is my rate of change? Five. Five. Six. Five. Six fifths. Oh. Oh. Yes. Six fifths. Six fifths. Okay. That fraction is the rate of change. Tomas? The altitude Y of a certain airplane after a certain number of minutes, X is shown in the graph. Is relationship linear? If it is, then we need the constant rate of change. Does this look linear? No. No. It does. It does look linear, but we do need to figure out if it is, okay? So we will need at least these two line. fractions, okay? All right. This first point looks like it's at about 3,500. 
And then it goes down to this next line, which would be at 3,000. So it went down 500. Very good. Then it went to the right by 2. Oh, so that's how you determine it. Okay. All right. And we're just determining if it's linear. So the next one, notice it's going to go down by 1,000. No, it's by 500, because three, three. Now the next one, look, this, it's going down one full line, which represents a full thousand. Yeah, so you said. Okay, the first one went down 500. Then you said 100, though. I said 500. You said 500, so why are you starting at the 4,000 Uh, I didn't, I started right here, on this point. Yeah, you go down to the next point. Okay. This next point is on the 3,000 line. Yeah, but right? it's just because you said, you said it went down 100. That's awesome. Okay, if I said 100, I meant 500. It's on this, okay? No, no, for the 1,000, you said... All right, so it goes down 1,000, and then how far to the right does it go? It goes two. Well, there's two right there. There's four. So it went to the right by four. Are these two fractions equal? Yes. Yeah, so it's linear. R? But they're not proportional. Okay, so that's a good question. Is this proportional? Is it a straight line? No. Yes. It's linear. L linear has the word line in it, meaning it's a straight line, okay? Linear, it's a straight line. What's the second thing you need for proportionality? Matt. Has to go through the origin. Does this go through the origin? No, no it does not. How does it go the origin the is right there. What is the Therefore, it does not, it definitely does not go this through the origin. Easy. Turns out on this number two, we don't have the rate of change yet. Okay, we have the fraction for it. We have two fractions that we can use for it, but they do need to be simplified, okay? Drake? Do you just do 1,000 divided by 500? That's very close. Yes. Christian. Yes, but it's two, negative 250, right? All right, the rate of change on this one, very good, is negative 250 over 1, all right? Now, as it turns out, this is a unit rate. It's a rate, okay? Rate O change. So you do need to label these. Notice the top is the change in y, correct? Yeah. Y is represented by feet. X is time represented by minutes. So, could you do so I put minutes. Negative, negative 250 feet per minute? Yep, and that would work. What, so you don't they mean the same thing, it's just showing. All right, before we start on the homework, uh, these are the answers to this, by the way, just if you're interested. They're very long. Guys, they're right here. Notice the answers to the questions that I put on. I showed my work, and that's good enough for me as far as an explanation goes, okay? You guys will have other math teachers that are going to say, write a paragraph. I can't control what your other math teachers do. I just know that I don't care. And I just want to see work, all right? Listen, we've talked about finding out if a... Uh, if... A relationship is, is linear with uh, tables, okay? Now let's look now at graphs, okay? So this is a graph. i got my y-axis and my x-axis and my origin, all right? So if I were to look at these, let's take, uh, let's take some lines, all right? All I want you to do is tell me if you think the line is linear, that's it. All I want to know is if you think it's linear. Okay, so let's look at our first line. Uh, if, okay, like this one right here, okay? No. Is that line linear? No. Well, it's supposed to be straight, so yes. Yeah, I, I really meant for it to be straight. That's as straight as I can draw it. Right? Yes. I was asking for linearity. That is proportional when you were talking about. Okay, you need two things for proportionality. Okay? All right, so this one would be linear, right? Yes. What about, uh, what about this line? Linear? No. No, no it is not, okay? Hey, what about this line right here? Linear. 
Yeah. That would be linear because I meant for it to be straight, okay? What about this one? It's linear. It's a straight. Very good. What about this one? C. Yes. This one? C. Yeah, those are all linear. This one? Yes. Linear. What about this? And this is going to... Is that linear? No. Oh, what about this one? Absolutely. No. Very good. What about this? No. No, it is not linear. Why? Because it's, it's not straight. What about this one? Yes. Well, it's too short to tell. What about that one? Well, yes. yes. Uh-oh. That... No, that was purely coincidental and not on purpose, slightly. Okay? <laughs> That's pretty, okay. Let's, <laughs> another example, guys. Okay, so that one. Uh, we already talked about that. Check the recording, okay? All right. Let's look at proportionality. So what two things do you need for proportionality? Cooper. Straight and go through the origin, okay? So for example, if this line, let's just imagine it's straight and goes through the origin. There's my origin, okay? Is that proportional? Yes, because yes, it's straight and it goes through the origin. Again, this only is, we're looking at this on a graph, right? Well, what about uh, this one? No. Yeah, that's definitely proportional, okay? What about uh, this one? No. no. Oh, very it's, good. It's linear, but not proportional. It's linear, very good, but it's not proportional. What about this one? No. 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 Linear, I mean. Good. Uh, let's look at a couple more. What about uh, this one? Proportional. No. No. Nope. This linear. one? Linear. No, linear. it's not going through the origin. What about <laughs> this? No. What about this one? No. This? No. no. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Almost yeah. one. So close. All right, you win. <laughs> All right, erase that. All right, so actually, Caden's asked a very good question, which is rare, right? <laughs> oh, this is a very good question, Caden. All right, so what he's saying is that let's say that, uh, so this, is, of course, is my x axis, is my y axis. So what if the line is this? What if it is the x-axis? Yes. Okay, well, let's ask the two questions. Is it straight? Yes. It is straight. Does it go through the origin? Yes. So is it proportional? Yes. Well, what if Nailed you were like, it. Mr. Saul, could there ever be a line that went like that? Yes, there are lines later on that you will see that go yeah, like this. It's straight. It's jagged. It turns. Really? Is it straight? No. No, it is not straight, Kay. Very good. But it goes through the... Wait, so, so if it, it goes through the origin, but is it straight? No. So, what so would why be are you asking? If it just You're continuing goes to ask. But if it just goes through the origin. But